okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, uh, dear participants. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation to the Ask for Job Project Final Conference, which is a very exciting event for us, and hopefully it will be very exciting for you as well. I would like to inform you that from this point, uh, the event is being recorded for reporting purposes. I also have a technical remark. Uh, please mute your microphone while you are not uh, speaking to avoid any interruptions. My name is Peter Pavardi. I'm representative of All Digital and moderator of this event. All Digital, as you may have known, uh, may know, is a Brussels-based international membership-based nonprofit organization aiming at enha enhancing digital skills across Europe. Uh, this event, uh, this conference, is a final dissemination conference of uh, Ask for Job, which is a three-year project funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union, coordinated by um, the Italian Employment and Training Agency, ERIFO. The project has been implemented by 11 partners from nine European countries. The Ask for Job project, which will be later presented, aims to support the development of digital competences and cognitive skills of low-skilled, long-term long unemployed adults. Um, our event has two main parts. In the first part, you will hear some welcome words from uh, Renato Sabadini, CEO of All Digital, and Giovanna D'Alessandro, president of ERIFO, the coordinating organization. Then we have invited four very interesting keynote speakers who will address the, the themes or the topics of the project from various angles. Uh, we will have William O'Keefe, a uh, policy officer at the European Commission, DG Employment. Then Yves Puny, head of unit at the European Commission Joint Research Center, JRC in Seville. Eric Balhausen, senior project manager at the European Commission, Education, Audiovisual and Cultural Executive Agency, and Andrea Giacomelli, Director of Research and Development Area at NAIP, Friuli Venezia Giulia. And you will have um, the chance to ask questions from the keynote speakers at the end of the block of their presentations. Um, we will have a short break, and sorry, I just, uh, uh, share a different screen now uh, with the program. I forgot to do it before. So then we will have a short break, and uh, and in the second part of uh, of uh, this conference, uh, you will hear about the Ask for Job project. It will be presented by Andrea Ranaletti, European uh, Project Manager at Arifo, and Nicole Georgiani uh, from Best Cybernetics. Um, finally, we invited our project partners uh, to present their Ask for Job experience, lessons learned, and any future plans they have in exploiting the project results. And we just hope that there will be no major technical difficulties during the event, and we apologize in advance if, if, if anything may occur. I think we all face now new challenges by organizing online events. So. Uh, let me give now the floor first to Mr. Renato Sabadini, CEO of All Digital. Uh, thank you, thank you, Peter, and uh, welcome everybody. I'm happy to see that there's so many attendants to this final event. It's always a good thing to see. Um, so, in relation to adult skills and digital skills in general, um, many of you know already, but some might not, might not know that we are basically a federation of uh, European digital uh, competence centers uh, represented in more than uh, uh, 29 countries, uh, including not only the EU, but also some at the outside, Norwegian, uh, Norway, Switzerland, uh, uh, Albania, soon Macedonia, North, uh, the Republic of North Macedonia, I believe, and so on and so forth. Um, our members are the ones who actually do the work on the ground in relation to uh, training people in basic digital skills. Uh, and uh, we are now in a crucial phase as uh, predictably considering the circumstances of this pandemic. So 
The task ahead of us are now, uh, I believe, at least twofold. On the one hand, uh, uh, we need to assess exactly what the impact uh, was uh, of the, not so much of the illness of the pandemic itself, but of the lockdown that uh, accompanied it for so many months in relation to the basic digital skills of, uh, of many Europeans. Uh, we know from uh, the survey, the Digital Economy and Society Index, uh, which uh, uh, worked on data collected last year that the current figure for people uh, believed to have uh, insufficient digital skills is around 42 uh, percent. We are now as all digital engaged in looking for partners to uh, carry out a survey to, uh, to see whether the data still stand that uh, 42 percent is still the same or if it has changed significantly during the months of lockdown, because that is, of course, one of the first thing we need to assess. Um, the other thing, uh, the other element, of course, again, related to COVID-19 is in light of the uh, consequences on the economy of the whole European Union and all the countries in the world, actually, uh, what kind of uh, competences will be needed for the jobs for the future. This was already, of course, an issue when we were looking uh, at uh, automation, progressive automation and the, changing, uh, the changes in the job market. But of course, now we are going probably to look at the uh, significant part of the population that may probably lose uh, their, their current job or have lost it already due to the pandemics. And so we are looking at a significant number, probably uh, more than 100 million people um, that will need some form of retraining and reskilling uh, in the future in order to reinsert themselves in a sort of uh, radically changed economy. Uh, from this perspective, we had a uh, an initiative at the beginning of February in relation to individual learning accounts uh, that we did together with uh, Commissioner Nicholas uh, Schmidt and uh, on which we are continuing to work so that we see that as one of the possible ways for uh, to empower uh, citizens in general, uh, especially those who whose uh, employment status is uh, and secure and uncertain at the moment to manage to find uh, ways to train themselves uh, in um, for possible new employment paths. Of all these things, we will discuss uh, also and also not to forget the the fact that uh, DigiComp is uh, soon going to uh, work on a new version, and we will have our friends and colleagues at the Joint Research Center. Uh, joining us at the All Digital Summit, to which you are all invited, either in person or online, depending on how you can, which will take place in Berlin on the 7th and 8th of October. So you can visit our website and the website of the summit to find the, uh, the registration form and the preliminary program. Having said all this, I wish you all the best. Uh, sorry, I had a I had put the, the counter to make sure I wouldn't I wouldn't do more than the five minutes. Having said all this, uh, um, I wish you all the best. Uh, a, a nice uh, final event for the Ask for Job project. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Renato. Uh, and now I'd like to invite Giovanna D'Alessandro from President of Erifo to address some lack of words. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Um, good afternoon, uh, everybody. I am Giovanna D'Alessandro from Erifo. So, uh, at the first, I would like to thank you uh, to all Digit and Pe Peter in particular uh, for organization of this uh, online meeting. Thank you also, Wall Consortium, uh, for carrying out uh, this project very complex. And thank you all uh, speakers and the guests of this event. 
Uh, I would like to introduce uh, us for the project because this is very, this is a very important project to me because I wrote the proposal and because I take part in the realization of IOS. So, as said uh, Peter, Ask for Job was a very complex project for several reasons. First, it involved nine countries, Euro, Europe, European countries. It required the coordination of 11 organizations. It required the harmonization of very heterogeneous languages and competencies. And at the end, it created a very important strong between the um, uh, digital competencies and cognitive skills. Um, I'm sorry, but we don't hear you. <laughs> it's not really very difficult. Um, myself, I can hear very well, but if you could please move a little bit closer to the microphone, I'm sure it would help. Okay. Do you listen now? Can you help me? It's, it's, it's good for me. Peter? So. Please, do you listen to me? Yes, please continue. Continue? So. The, the link between the uh, digital competencies and the cognitive skill was the most complex challenge. It's not enough to have the digital skill, but it's important that the person is able to use them to live and to work. The um, Ask for Job project uh, consists in three, uh, three uh, minds activity uh, that will uh, be described in detail uh, Andrea Lazzanelletti later. The first activity was the online software self-assessment test. The second product, distance training to develop and consolidate the digital and cognitive skill. And the third product was the capability lab to encourage the people awareness uh, of their digital skill and uh, how to use them in job seeker, uh, job research and the career development. It's important uh, at the end to underline the, the theoretical framework that supports us for job. The focus is the capability approach and the main concept is the capacitation of Amartya Sen. The capacitation is to be understood as the ability to active and combine one's own internal resources, to deal with the new situation, training or work situation in a valid, productive way. The capacitation can be stimulated by educator or counselor for a double activity. Uh, awareness is our internal resources and support is this target in becoming able to set a motion to activate personal energy in order to deal with the pre predictable and unpredictable need challenges emerging from the situation phase. The concept of the digital competency in Ask for Job uh, has been understood as the ability to act, learning to use the digital technology in according with the Ask for Job approach means transferring the competence, learning to think. So, thank you very much for your cooperation and your attention. I finish my short speech. Thank you. Thank you very much, Giovanna. Uh, let's continue now uh, with the uh, block of uh, keynote presentations. Uh, we have four speakers, and I kindly ask the speakers to 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 keep the about fifteen minute time frame for their presentations, so it will allow us some time in the end to ask questions. And first, I'd like to invite William O'Keefe, policy officer at the European Commission DG Employment. 
Uh, thank you, Peter, and thank you, all digital and Aerofo, for the, the the opportunity to speak here today. It's a nice opportunity to start the new policy semester, so to speak, uh, returning to Brussels in the in the autumn with uh, such a, a an interesting event for an interesting project. So, really, congratulations to all the the partners, and I, I'm happy to be here. I'm just going to share my screen, uh, so hopefully, it will uh, comply and uh you can see uh peter let me know if you don't see the we do the see slide. it you see we it do, great. We, do, we do see the slides thank you great great uh so really i just want to uh briefly set some some policy context from the perspective of uh dg employment i'm working uh, and indeed the the commission when it comes to uh the topics of skills and qualifications i work in the skills and qualifications unit uh, where we have a specific uh, file on digital skills, but we also have a number of other policy topics, including uh, Europass, the European Qualifications Framework, uh, ESCO, the European Classification System for Skills, Qualifications, Competences, and also validation of non-formal and informal learning. Uh, and also we look at uh, topics like DigComp uh, and EntreComp. So they're by their nature, lifelong learning topics, transversal topics. And really, when I look at a, a project like this, the Ask for Job project, I really see the cross-cutting nature of it and then the way in which you're trying to connect provision of education and training with uh, needs of the labor market, with needs of the uh, individual. Uh, and it's very innovative and very relevant. So uh, really, I, it's a, a good opportunity for us to be here today. I just want to touch on the what I would call the digital skills uh, ecosystem and just, you know, really, again, uh, to my mind, it demonstrates the relevance of the, the, the projects uh, that we're going to be hearing from later. Of course, the I see that the origins of the Ask for Job project come were motivated by the policy goals of the 2016 uh, skills agenda for Europe. And since then, of course, on the 1st of July, the Commission adopted the European skills agenda and updated novel agenda, which is, you know, focused on the need to bring together stakeholders to work together from across education, training, labour market, industry, social partners, and key organisations like All Digital, Aerofo, and all the partners in the project today so that we can deliver skills for jobs that are specifically linked to the uh, labor market needs. Uh, and it's specifically cited in the skills agenda that we need to empower people as well through innovative tools and through a support for learning pathways and mapping out, helping people with their careers. And when I see elements within the skills for job, like the capability lab, as well as, of course, the element of self-assessment and the MOOCs, it really, really just demonstrates the relevance of what you've done uh, and really connects it in a very fundamental way to the skills agenda that's just been uh, adopted, as I say, this July. The skills agenda was adopted in the very peculiar and strange circumstances um, that we've all been been living through. It sets uh, and really was uh, articulated in the context of COVID, but also in terms of dealing with what uh, we term the digital and green transitions. So it had the uh, the need to deal with digital transitions at the core of the twelve actions that were set out in the skills agenda, and this is very specifically. Uh, a focus on digital skills and that context of um, trying to support people to develop and understand the digital skills that they need to be able to uh, find opportunities to manage their career and manage their lifelong learning. The Skills Agenda for Europe announced that the uh, Digital Education Action Plan will be upcoming. Also uh, mentioned the Digital Europe Programme, which is about building strategic digital capacities across the uh, EU and also gave mention to supporting digital crash courses for SMEs, which had also previously been announced in the EU SME strategy, and also made reference to how the, the skills agenda will support EU ICT uh, short training courses. Uh, so it set out really a, a canvas, uh, an ambitious set of uh, activities around digital skills. And of course, the work begins now on the implementation of the, the, the skills agenda. Um, with the with with that, it announced the digital education action plan, and I'm sure everyone on the call today uh, is is familiar or has engaged in some way with the action plan that was first adopted uh, almost two years ago now, 
and no doubt you will know that there's a consultation ongoing on the uh, updated Digital Education Action Plan uh, to be adopted in the autumn. So there's an open consultation that's ongoing until the 4th of September. And really the Digital Education Action Plan, uh, it's, the consultation is specifically asking what are the needs of uh, learners, workers, job seekers, organizations, employers, and schools and education and training organizations in this new uh, context in which we find ourselves. Uh, already digital technology has uh, transformed the way we live, work and learn. And now we have this new context, uh, quite a sudden shift, uh, you know, and the, the most immediate example, of course, is how we're all connecting today online. And the very fact that you know 100 million learners across the EU have all had their learning experience impacted upon by COVID and of course there's uh, continued uncertainty as we return back to education and training now in the autumn. So that's what the consultation is going to be asking people about on the Digital Education Action Plan. What are the needs? What are the understanding? What are the contexts in which we uh, need to support digital skills? Certainly the new action plan, uh, it's still being drafted and being developed, but it is aiming to have a lifelong learning uh, focus. And now obviously we, it needs to have the clear input from stakeholders on what are the needs and what should be the EU response to issues around uh, digital education, digital competences. So th that's the EU skills agenda. Uh, and the Digital Education Action Plan, which is upcoming. Uh, you'll also also be familiar with DigComp, the European Digital Competence Framework for, for Citizens. And of course, our my colleague Eve from G JRC will speak more in depth on this. But just as to reiterate, you know, it's one of the key EU policy files and we're happy to see it become more and more established as the EU tool for communicating what it is that we mean by digital skills and that it brings in this holistic issue a uh, holistic technology neutral approach to describing the digital skills that we need. Also the ability to program and deal with tools, but also the issues of mindset, netiquette and safety. So it's comprehensiveness and the nature of the tool and its flexibility really means that it has been embraced and we're very happy with that. And of course the Ask for Job project is, is a key example of that. So really I'd just like to re reiterate uh, our, our, I suppose our, our, our thanks and our gratefulness for how much we see DigComp uh, embraced in projects like this. I'd like to touch briefly uh, towards the end of my presentation now on uh, the e Europass, which is one of the key actions uh, announced as part of the European Skills Agenda. We launched Europass uh, also on the 1st of July, which uh, Europass is the EU framework for the com communication skills and qualifications in the EU. And I suppose the, the reason I want to mention it today is that I see so much within the Ask for Job project that can offer learning and examples uh, and inspiration for, the, for, for Europass. Uh, one thing to reiterate, um, uh, is that Europass is uh, a lifelong learning tool and we've published it and it's available, uh, launched it I should say, and it's available now in 29 languages for people to register and profile and manage all of their personal information on their education and training and also find information on jobs via Eures and find information on learning opportunities. What we launched on the 1st of July is what we call phase one. And this really is the starting point for what we hope will be a modern dynamic tool uh, that can support people with their lifelong learning. Uh, really, and it's an open free tool for, available in all, um, in all 36 Europass countries for people to use. Uh, with one of the key things that will be available to people now, they can create a Europass CV and a Europass cover letter that they, has always been in place. But now as well, there's going to be the possibility to register and create your, uh, get an analysis, create a full profile of all your education, training and skills history, get analysis of your skills and also to indicate your interests and your goals. And based on all of the information in your uh, in your profile and based on the analysis of your skills and you, the user indicating what their interests are, they will receive suggestions of jobs and courses. So the way it's uh, also putting user, uh, 
instructing users and guiding users to see the connection between their skills and experiences from whatever part of life they may come uh, and to connect them and give them represent their skills in a visual way and then connect them to jobs and learning opportunities. So this phase one is uh, elements of it are still in a beta version and we will continue to grow and fine tune the service that we're offering. Uh, of interest to all of the to you today is that we uh, hope that we are starting work now on building a dig digital skills self-assessment tool uh, looking at all again all all levels of digcomp and we're starting the conceptual work and design work for this right now and something that we hope will be available uh, next year that will be incorporated within the uh, europass profile so that when people are building their profile they can also uh, undertake an assessment of their of their digital skills and as i say this will be incorporated within the 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 profile so this is the the suite of uh tools and services that we're offering through the new through the new europass and really i see you know the, again just examples of the the projects like ask ask for job uh again offer key learning and uh, information so DigComp, of course, continue, will underpin all of this work uh, and the colleagues from JRC will be talking about more of the examples and the ways in which it's been used across the, the labour market and education and training sector. But I just wanted to, to highlight this aspect here and of course that we will continue to um, want to promote, promote DigComp and promote Europass as the, the project e evolves. So really that's the cross section of topics that I wanted to talk about in the in this opening kind of policies, setting the scene in a policy context and really just talking about the, the relevance and importance of what you're doing. This digital skills ecosystem is more crucial than ever. So really um, that's, uh, as I've kept emphasizing, just the, uh, the importance of the, the, the today's project and the Ask for Job project. So uh, congratulations to you again, and I'll, I'll be happy to take questions towards the end. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was really interesting. I think this uh, and the, the, the new Europass is uh, very much complementing uh, the aims of the Ask for Job project. Um, and you've you've been talking about the the European uh, digital competence framework for citizens, and therefore we asked uh, JRC, the Joint Research Centre, to present us the framework, as the framework is uh, has been used uh, for the Ask for Job project, and the project is fully tailored uh, on the on the Digcom frame, current Digcom framework, and. Um, we are also curious to see some other examples of uh, uh, the DigiComp application in training and education. Eve, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. I hope you can hear me and see me. Thanks a lot. Otherwise, you mentioned it in the chat. In the meantime, I will share my screen. And uh, just a second. Uh, okay, so that I have to do something different here um, because apparently I have too many windows open <laughs> uh, and now I do not have uh, well I can also share my entire screen maybe uh, that can also work let me see If you want, Eve, I can I can share your presentation. Yeah, no, no, maybe oh, wait a second. No, yeah, I have too many screens open. Apparently, I do not. Yeah, I mean, oh, I can give it another try. Okay. Uh, just one little second. Um, apologies for that. Okay, last try. Otherwise, we can do it. You can do it from. No, apparently, there's something. There's something wrong here. So, ah, now I have it, now I have it, okay, okay, share. Okay, I hope you can see my screen now. Yes, perfectly. Apologies for the interruption. So thanks a lot for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be with you and also to be part of, I mean, for the final conference of this very, very interesting project, also already mentioned uh, by William. Uh, I will share with you a bit more details on the use of the DIGCOM, the Digital Competence Framework, in the context of employability. 
as you know, and as William said, uh, so this is a collaborative project between, on the one hand, DG Employment, who somehow, you know, is the policy owner of DIGCOMP, uh, and we, as the CRC, the Joint Research Center, we were developed the developers of DIGCOMP, and we are somehow, you know, the research analysis and studies department of the commission, and, and that's our uh, origin uh, within the project. And uh, to start with, but I can almost skip this, this slide because I think most of you know, most of you are aware, you see some of the data there on the digital skills challenges in Europe. Renato already mentioned also the 43% of the EU population uh, and 35% of the EU labor force of insufficient digital skills. There's a strong link, of course, also with no digital skills and being unemployed, 42% of those with no digital skills unemployed. We also know that digital natives are not the same or different from being digital competent. You know, the one doesn't mean per definition the other. And then I put a really in red also, as Renata also said in the introduction, that with COVID-19, digital skills now even appear to be more crucial and more important uh, than ever. But at the same time, of course, also it will be interesting uh, to see uh, how the digital skills now are evolving in the population because they're now forced somehow also to use uh, digital skills. And I think Renato mentioned the project they're going to have to check if the data are still valid and maybe if they are changed after COVID. That would, of course, be very, very interesting uh, uh, to hear uh, as well. Uh, just to highlight one element or two elements related to the digital skills indicator and the data is that, first of all, as you can see on the slide, uh, there's a major difference between the countries uh, within Europe. Uh, and then secondly, there's also a major difference within the countries, especially between, and you see there the blue, the, the red and the green, between cities, towns and rural areas. Really, really significant uh, differences in terms of uh, uh, having the necessary digital uh, skills. So that's definitely also a challenge we have to uh, always uh, take into account. Now, DIGCOMP has been developed to support, to help with addressing these digital skills uh, challenges. And you know, the definition of DIGCOMP, it's a broad kind of definition saying it's about confident, critical, responsible use of these technologies and engagement with these technologies for learning at work, and for participation in society. So that's the official definition also that is in the council recommendation on key competences for lifelong learning. And you see the screenshot of the different reports. We had uh, the first one in 2013, they come 2.0 in 2016, they come 2.1 2017, and we keep on releasing new uh, materials related to that. I will come back to that uh, in a second. Uh, you know the framework, uh, the five areas, the 21 competences. I'm not going to provide any more information on that. And also, I think most of you know in 2.1, we developed the eight proficiency levels uh, from the most basic to the most advanced uses of digital competence. And we try to use this metaphor of learning to swim in the digital ocean uh, to try to explain the progression in the different uh, proficiencies related to the use of uh, digital skills. Now, a bit more recent information, and that's maybe more of interest, or maybe not everybody is aware of that. I can confirm that, and it's, it's more, but we are for sure, for sure, we know that in more than 16 EU member states, DICOMP is being used in one way or another, probably even more, but we are not always aware, of it, and people do not always report to us their use of DIGCOMP. It's also in the neighboring countries, especially the Western Balkans, where the European Training Foundation uh, is very active in promoting DIGCOMP and also ENTRECOMP uh, for uh, uh, the human capital uh, policies in the, the neighboring countries. We know more than 70 projects using DIGCOMP and already half a million uh, DIGCOMP certificates have been issued by external stakeholders, not by the Commission, but by external stakeholders, because as you know, the Commission doesn't uh, issue any certificates related to that. And then we published, and I will go a little bit more in detail on that, in July uh, this summer, uh, two new reports, the DICCOMP for employability, 
with case studies on the one end and an implementation guide on the other hand. And then also what's on our agenda, we are together with all digital actually and, and the consortium of, uh, of partners working on finalizing a pilot of a self-reflection tool uh, based on DIGCOM 2.1. Uh, and we hope to have it finalized by the end of the year. And that will feed then also into the project what William mentioned towards a further development of an assessment tool to be integrated in Europass uh, later, uh, 21 or 22. And also, just to confirm what Renato said, that we are going to start after the summer with the work towards the release of a new version of DICOM, DICOM 2.2 somewhere to be released uh, in a year, uh, with the aim to give more examples, to take into account the current day context, to take into account COVID, but also artificial intelligence and the new technologies that are emerging, and to somehow provide more uh, details to, to check and see and illustrate that the 21 DIFCOM competences still work and function within uh, the current day uh, environment. So that's also on our agenda. Uh, but now, just to give you a bit more detail on these two reports. So on the one hand, we released DIGCOMP at work, a selection of case studies on how DIGCOMP uh, is put into action on the labor market. And in, ad in addition, uh, a more concrete implementation guide based on these case studies to try to give more concrete, uh, hands-on kind of uh, advice and steps on the use of uh, DIGCOMP within the context of employment. Here you see uh, the case study report, the list of uh, nine uh, case studies. Um, maybe I'm not going to go through uh, all of them in detail. Uh, I just leave you a little bit of time to see the different uh, headings. So we have PANI and Internet and the Digital Competence Development System uh, originated in Italy, but then more countries being involved. Prodigeo in Italy is related to uh, public and private employment offices. Icanos in Spain was a self-assessment, training, digital competence uh, profiles as well. ECC, DICOM certification in Poland, as a certification system. Compass uh, was an Erasmus Plus, no, a, a Horizon 2020 project, also developing a self-assessment tool and lessons for addressing DICOM. Musa is applying it to uh, museum staff. Uh, Smartif Map in Italy is looking at companies and the digital transformation and also taking part of uh, DIGCOM there also within that context. Uh, we have BITE certification in Catalonia and then Pathway for Employ, a European project as well, looking at uh, DIGCOM within employability. And finally, ADECO's Competence Dictionary. ADECO as one of the biggest private employment agencies in Italy is now also adapting its terminology uh, using uh, DIGCOMP. So these are the nine case studies, cases described in the report. And I see you thinking, although I don't see anyone, but virtually I can imagine that you are wondering why the jobs, Ask for Jobs project is not there. You know, it could have been perfectly well. If I now read what you've been doing, uh, it could have been perfectly well. Also one of the case studies, uh, but as you know, I mean, this was decided, I mean, some years ago, and we also keep kind of this collection of cases up to date. So, so I, I, I mean, I'm pretty convinced that we will also will take into account also what we can learn from Ask for Job into future kind of uh, releases later to, uh, to DIGCOMP. Then what I would like to share very briefly is what we did as a cross case kind of analysis of these nine cases. Um, and uh, first of all, what we looked at, of course, within the context of labor markets, we looked at the labor market intermediaries, uh, the skilling functions, and you see on your left a list of you know, activities there, skills analysis, career advice, uh, training, delivery of training, assessment of skills, uh, job search support. So you see there are all these kind of activities. And then in blue, you see uh, uh, in the cases when DICOMP is used, for these kind of activities. And actually the bulk there is related to labor market skills analysis, to design and development of training and to delivery of training, and also to assessment of skills and certification of competences. 
these are the main activities that we uh, identified uh, there. Also, if you look at, for example, the stakeholders that have been involved in these DIFCOM case studies, you see a wide range of stakeholders. You see trainings, NGOs, public administrations, Ministry of Labor and Social Policy, regional government, public agencies, universities, private companies, private research foundation, third sector organizations. So you see again, and, and I think that's probably the strength also, a wide range of stakeholders being involved in implementing of DIFCOMP. And the next slide, this one is a bit more complicated for you maybe to understand, but I will very briefly explain it to you because it shows on the one hand, on your left side, what is actually one of the most important uses also that we see of DIFCOMP within an employability context is the development of what we call professional digital profiles, P, uh, PDPs, where actually you take a specific job function or job, a sales representative, an entrepreneur, a teacher, uh, an office clerk, an artist, and you see on your left a whole list uh, there. And then you take the DIFCOMP and you see for the specific competences for that specific job, if and how important they are and what, how specifically these uh, uh, should be developed uh, uh, for these specific jobs. And you see that the different kind of DIFCOMP competences and in color you see the different that for certain competences, this is being done at uh, uh, a basic level foundation or intermediate or advanced. Uh, uh, and we have a full list for all the 21 competences uh, in the report where you can see the relation, uh, the relation of that. Again, just to highlight that I think this development of the digital, professional digital profiles is a very, very important activity. Uh, the one done by many, many different stakeholders uh, throughout Europe. And finally, as also in your project, uh, well, no, no, not assessment, no, but you have, well, you have also self-assessment, right? So we looked at how assessment is taking place and how certification is taking place. And you see on your left there again, the different uses, self-perception, self-assessment kind of questions, knowledge questions, uh, performance-based kind of assessment. Then within training, this is, can be used for pre-course training or post-course uh, training. Uh, the types of feedback can be you know, a self-assessment kind of report. It can also be a badge, a course badge, or a competence badge, uh, or a professional, uh, digital professional uh, uh, badge as well. So you see there again the different ways uh, of how DICOM is used within the context of uh, assessment and uh, certification. Just to share with you briefly from the case study analysis, the, the kind of the, the, the main messages and the key strengths of DIFCOMP as reported by the case owners is indeed, as William in the beginning said, a common language, a common understanding, facilitated mutual learning, and especially this mutual learning is very, very important that, you know, we don't start from scratch, but everybody learns from the others so that, you know, you can advance much more quicker. Also, a view of DIFCOMP, of digital competence, and not just technical, but also, but as key transversal skills, knowledge and attitudes, important for all. They like the broad, clear, and the solid structure of the framework, but also its flexible nature. Uh, the fact that it is, as William said also in the beginning, technologically neutral uh, and also somehow country independence. It's a European framework. That's why this EU, EU origin is also highly uh, 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 positively evaluated by, by stakeholders. It is a reference framework. And since it is somehow from the European Union uh, originated, there is this, this, some guaranteed sustainability uh, behind it. So these are key strengths uh, of DIGCOMP as reported by the case owners. And also some lessons learned that, you know, some cases or some stakeholders say, okay, maybe the basic technological skill, technical skills are less explicit than DIGCOMP. Also, there is always a need for localization, adaptation, translation, contextualization. And this is quite labor intensive. And sometimes stakeholders lack a bit of guidance on how to do that, on how to concretely apply the proficiency levels, for example, how to develop the learning outcomes, uh, because also the framework is somehow flat. The 21 competences are all at the same level, more or less. 
the need for stakeholders involvement in a community of practice and in the meantime all digital has, has developed uh, this community of practice very important is what we observed is actually that in the world of work uh, employment agencies companies uh, DICOM is not very well known so there's definitely also a need for awareness raising there and some stakeholders of course also highlighted that EU endorsement would be would be desirable an EU label uh, but there again this is something which is very difficult to do uh, for the Commission uh, but that is reported as desirable then to finalize just to share with you how this implementation guide looks like uh, which is basically says like concretely okay if you want to start using DICOM before you start what do you have to do what do you have to take into account when you start implementing DICOMP, uh, which kind of steps to be taken? What do you do after uh, your project uh, finishes? And then below also some additional strategic uh, considerations. So the idea here was really to, to have like a hands-on, very concrete kind of uh, uh, information for stakeholders if they want to use DICOMP, how to do it in the different stages of uh, using DICOMP. And I think with that, Thank you for your attention. I hope everything was clear and understandable. And of course, I'm open for uh, questions and discussion later on uh, at the session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eve. It was a very interesting presentation. And uh, yeah, I, I think we can be a bit sorry about not having a score job project among those examples. Unfortunately, our project is just finishing. I'm afraid it was just a little bit too early when uh, these examples were collected to present the a score job already. But I'm sure in the next edition, uh, our project uh, will be there. And I also uh, wrote something in the chat. You mentioned the Digicom Digi community of practice, which has been um, launched by O Digital uh, with your support. Uh, everyone can join us um, by writing, sending an email to digicom at odigital.org. Uh, and then we will include you into a, a, an active community of practice, which is already existing. Uh, so the next uh, speaker, Eric Balhausen from the executive agency uh, of uh, 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 managing Erasmus Plus projects in Brussels, ERCA, ERCA, I think that's the correct pronunciation. And Eric is al always inspiring us, uh, at least from two uh, from from two perspectives. One is to putting our initiatives projects into into a, into a broader policy context. Uh, and to understand how we fit there, and also how to increase the impact, uh, uh, outreach, and the, the impact of, of, of our projects and initiatives. Um, Eric, the floor is yours. Okay, I think um, my presentation is on. You can see it, yes? Yes, yes, it's and on. The sound it's is okay, good. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Peter, for the introduction. That's exactly um, what I wanted to look at a bit um, um, the, uh, the wider um, context. Um, now I've just to see, yeah, okay. So, and uh, in particular, I'm working at the executive agency, um, um, education, audiovisual and culture, and I'm um, responsible for the social inclusion call within the Erasmus Plus program. So I wanted to um, uh, present a bit the wider context of the educational pro uh, um, program, where we came from, um, with a view of where we are going, and again, trying to stimulate all digital who have, who have such brilliant projects all the time uh, to continue the great work and to look into the future and to work together again. And um, here I would like to say again that um, um, the project um, you finished recently um, with us in social inclusion was one of the best. You had a score of uh, 96 of 100. So I'm very happy to be addressing uh, part of your partners and this partnership because um, it's people like you who really um, have a great um, impact in the program and make a, a big difference. So just to start, we often forget that already in, in 2014 when uh, uh, Jean-Claude Juncker addressed the European Parliament, um, set a political agenda which was quite different from the LLP program. If we remember in the LLP program we also had um, adult education as a separate um, as a separate program, 
in Erasmus Plus, the programs were, were put together, so it was no longer separate. And the political agenda was to bring different sectors together and to focus on lifelong learning, not by explicitly saying it, but by, by doing by a thematic orientation. And this was a really important um, quotation for, for the education sector. Yes, it's about job. Yes, it's about the economy, of course, but it's also about um, social inclusion and to, to develop that. And I think, especially in adult education, this is an important aspect. It was already mentioned. The adult education sector is very wide. It, it is probably one of the most varying sectors um, within the European Union. All the member states have different systems. So therefore, it's very important that we have projects which do what you do, namely working together, exchanging good practice, but also looking at the, um, the, the great differences we have in the adult education sector and how we can learn and profit from, uh, from each other. Um, no, I'm a bit, the slide doesn't want to, there we go. Yeah, and, Eric, so, sorry for interrupting you. We, 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 we are missing part of your slides, the, the right part of it. Uh, I, I'm okay, not sure what, what you can do with that. Uh, yeah. But there is a gray shaded area. I know. I, I will get rid of it. Wait. Okay. 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 That's it, huh? No, two more. Okay, one more down there, and one ah, other. Ah, that's the chat. On... I have the chat open. Yeah. I okay. see. I see. I see. I see. And and on the left, yeah, there where your mouse cursor is at right right now. If you could close that as well, please. Okay, it's perfect now. Thank you. Now it's okay. Good. Mm -hmm. well, this this was already mentioned, and um, that, that's the, the the average. Maybe it's a bit higher. It's a bit lower. But what was very important, what um, William O'Keefe already also pointed out, you know, we have averages, but actually, when we look at the different countries, um, that there, um, each country has regions where where really work is needed and has to um, can be done. And, and this is uh, one of the aspects which is uh, particularly interesting in your project because, of course, in your recommendations, you, you make general recommendations for the national level, um, you make recommendations for the EU level, but when we look at the country-specific analysis and when, uh, when we read the report and the findings of the, of the um, sessions you organized, we see the enormous um, differences in approaches um, of adult education, which is so particular of this sector um, throughout Europe. So, so this is this is um, very important, and um, you are in the K2 um, project. So the the scope is of course limited. It's not so much money, but we see this valuable information coming out of the different member states and really going down to the institutional level. So, so this is something I think we, we, should, we should discuss in terms of projects for the future and the impact we want to achieve in the Erasmus Plus, Plus program um, um, when, we, when we try to, to, to work on digital competences, that we have these uh, different level, levels and how to bring them together and how to, how to improve uh, meaningful cooperation at these different levels. And in the project, we see it very nicely. We have the institutional level, we have the regional level, we have the national level, and then we have the EU level. And this is something um, which is new, I would say, under um, the Erasmus um, Plus uh, program, where there was a clear focus introduced of this uh, political orientation. Um, so, just a second. Um, so the the this policy um, the pol the importance of policy and the social dimension was further developed by um, the Juncker Commission and a key moment was the social summit um, for fair growth and jobs in Gothenburg and here for the first time again it was very clearly stated um, that that. Um, the importance of education and culture supporting this process. So again, uh, from a political point of view, I think this is a key moment. And this is something, you know, th these kind of documents are key documents to look at, um, to lead the, they lead us, they lead the way and they show where, where at European level, at Europe, at the European level, um, we want to, we want to collaborate and where we want to, where we want to, to take this. But important, as we know, um, 
in education, we still, the mandate of the commission is still very limited. When we want to see where, where the foundations are, we have to go back all the way to Maastricht, right? Back to the 90s. And that, that is currently the only clear, um, the only clear um, legal basis, let's say. And in, in the Maastricht tre Treaty, we talk about improvement of quality of education um, and, and development of education at the European level. But it's two sentences and it's very vague. So these kind of, um, it, um, this um, Gothenburg um, event is very important because it's not a legal base. We can see the document is a, is a recommendation um, but it, it shows where, we, where the, the, the policies um, will be going at a European level. So what is so, so special about um, your project? Um, I think we, we discuss a lot um, policy and policy recommendation, but we should not forget that at the heart of educational projects is pedagogy. Pedagogy is what makes things happen in education and often we have a lot of discussion about policy and we forget about a bit a bit about the pedagogy um, in education and I think this is very important that you know DigiComp is a framework with which you can measure certain things but the thing which does which does the nitty-gritty is the pedagogy so that is why what this is what I like in this project because the pedagogy is really at the heart of the project. So the project had a very well-defined uh, methodology. Um, this creates focus on the inquiry. What, what are the specific needs of the adults? What do we want to focus on? What are the challenges and assumptions? And again, here the project looks at all the levels, really, institutional, regional, national, and EU. What are the challenges? What are our assumptions? We think this might help or that might help. Then, then um, the project um, did the labs, and in the labs, there is where you discover what is really going on. And um, that's again why this project is so successful, because the methodology was defined from the beginning, it was agreed in the partnership, and all partnerships use the same methodology. And that's, that's, a, point, that's a point I would like to um, highlight, because this often gets underestimated. The European level contribution of projects um, improves with the, the more there is an agreement on the methodology. Why? Because you will get data which is comparable. And um, we already heard from the previous speakers, data is something which is very rare and specifically in adult education, we have very, very little data. So grassroots data, and this is again another very important uh, aspect of this project. We're talking about grassroots implementation. The institutions are really at grassroots level working with adults at their level. And the focus groups, for instance, they show, the, they show the individual aspects of this level, but because we have an agreed uh, methodology in the project, the data which comes out of the project can be compared afterwards uh, um, across the whole partnership. So when, when, when that happens, we see that the project comes up with questions, um, with questions, evolves more questions. Yes, we have more questions because when we compare the data, we, we can identify why is this working in one member state? Why is it not working in another? Why is it working in this institution? Why is it not uh, working in another? And, and this is clearly one of the strengths of all digital. You are a network, so you can also, it, it's much uh, easier for you to involve other people, but you have this in your methodology, this continuous evaluation. And I know this because I manage several um, of your projects. I'm the project officer for several of your projects. And what we always see, and that is very important, that the information doesn't stay stuck in one project, but it's shared across the network. So we, here we have this again, the methodology, really, really important. You have an analysis, what are the needs? It's very clear. And this is also often very underestimated. If, if we don't have a needs analysis at the beginning, we often see that in projects, there's a lot of discussion. We should do this, we should do that. No, the needs analysis is done. And again, here in this project, we see the needs analysis really also at institutional level and they, are, they can differ enormously. But that is important and it's not a problem. If the methodology is sound and agreed, we, we, it can cater for different needs of different target groups 
and do the and implement the project and arrive again with comparable um, data. So this is this is very um, interesting because th this kind of data and analysis really uh, um, allows you to make recommendations to upscale. So when the project is finished and we see this very nicely in the report, the recommendations are are not the usual ones we see very generalized. No, they're, they're very concrete and they, they build on the implementation of the project and can recommend if you want to achieve this, you have to do that. So, so that is, that is um, very important. So the evaluation also here, it's not just filling out some questionnaire. Again, the evaluation in this project is based on an agreed methodology and all the partners evaluate therefore in the same in the same way uh, collecting similar uh, the, the same types of data and again this allows for this allows for um, uh, better comparison and therefore better recommendations impact so if if we have done all this and you did it in your project then we can look at the two, um, this will allow us to look at the two levels. We can, the improvement and impact is based on either we improve the um, education system as such, or we improve and enhance the quality um, of, of education. And for instance here, this is very interesting in this project, enhancing of quality there, of course, the Digitcom framework um, um, plays an important role. And we can get um, understandings from the project, how, how, how um, is, is quality improving and how is it doing that? Because we can use uh, frameworks like Digitcom to, to again compare across the whole, the whole range, the whole sector, the different partners. We, we have it, the, the framework provides for a matrix where, which can be used by everybody because it's well defined and we're using the same language and we can understand the, the different levels because they have been well defined. And this is, this is something um, uh, where, we, where, we, where we have to continue. Um, in the project, of course, we have some first um, uh, findings, but impact is also about, and this is a limitation of the of the of the pro of Erasmus Plus program, and here I would I'm I'm very happy to discuss with you, Peter, and your partners. If we want to really take impact to a different level, we should we should um, go back to participants one or two or three years later and see um, how they profited from from uh, what what was done in the project. What have they learned? What what are the real outcomes? We can have. Um, assumptions about outcomes in the projects and you have them but then in two or three years time did they really profit um, from from this approach what did things really get got, did they really uh, become better and I think this is a discussion to be had I've mentioned it before three years duration is okay to to do a project and we see we have good results but then we should have an activity where one or two years afterwards we, we could we could have a follow-up project and come back. And I'm mentioning this to you in particular because if you have individual projects, this is very difficult. But if you have a network, it's not difficult. I looked at your website last night and I see all the projects under your, on your website and I see that people are still refer, coming back to the projects which were implemented before. And therefore, this could be really something to think about. Can, you, you have several pro projects in your, in your portfolio, which you've done. Can we, can we uh, say in two years, we will take five of them and really do a check and evaluate an um, impact study. And I think this is, this is really something to look into and to discuss because um, as I said, what I see, the methodology is very, very sound. You have a lot of experience now, and this would really take the whole thing to a different level. What is the impact after two or three years? That we already said that we have little data, but about that we have next to no data at all, nowhere. So, so, so that's that's um, that's an important point. And again, I just uh, put this slide here. Again, the strength of the project is not. I would say, you know, this kind of statistic is is very good and it's very helpful. Um, but we already have organizations like OECD or or. Or, or and other organizations who do these kind of studies or uh, um, uh, the CIS study or PIAC. Um, so, so this is, 
this this is less important to be done by projects. Your strength is that you're at grassroots level, okay? So we can have a look at this kind of data. What, what is the correlation of this, of this graph in comparison to your grassroots uh, findings in your, in your country reports? How does it match? Is it better? Is it lower? Why are certain regions uh, uh, better? Others are, 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 are not so good. So, so this, this is something which is, um, which is um, very important. Thanks to the fact that it would be really good if we could go if we could go back um, uh, after two and three years and and, and have a look um, what what the impact was after a certain period of time. Okay, um, I, I still have one or two minutes. Um, I will just uh, quickly go take you through um, some of the some of, some good things of of um, um, in Erasmus Plus. Probably you are aware, um, Epale the the. The platform for adult education. This was recently revamped considerably. So um, I invite you to, if you haven't done so yet, there is a blog session uh, section to blog about the outcomes of your project. Uh, make yourself visible. As you can see, this is this is quite amazing. The Epale um, platform has really been uh, has really been improved, and the uptake is enormous. We you can see there are over. 71,970 members. So if you publish on here, you have visibility. Plus, there is a, a, a big um, opportunity now also to collaborate, to network. So um, you have community stories. What, so this would be good to, to have a blog or an article um, about your projects. Um, there's an events calendar. So you will have your conference in October, put it in the events calendar, become a member, put, put your events in the events calendar. Um, there's the Erasmus project results, and um, this is linked to a new tool, find partners. So if you want to have new partners or you need specific partners, um, then, then you can use this as well. And it's uh, dedicated, of course, this platform is dedicated to adult education, but there are also other platforms um, uh, like school nets or 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 uh, town twinning for other kinds of activity. Um, one, not the last, but one thing, um, Peter. I I I'm, I would like to challenge you and your partners to to go for a policy experimentation project. Maybe you you have had a lot of experience now in projects. This is a K two project. You have experience in K three project. And the crown in the K3 family are the policy experimentations. This action will continue under the new program, um, and um, that it will be it will be increased because it has been very successful. There will be more money so that we can that we can um, that we can have uh, more projects. Um, I, I was also a project um, a manager of this call when it was launched. This was one of my projects. Um, Coincidentally, it's on guidance and orientation for adult learners. The project is still active. They are also active in the Epale platform. So I invite you to have a look. Um, these are these are people to to talk to, in in, in view of to in view of um, launching a policy experimentation. Why do, would I like to invite you to do a policy experimentation? Because policy experimentations um, they are difficult because they're managed by ministries, but they give you the opportunity to. To, to tap into really um, policy um, at the highest level. The ministries are coordinating these projects. Why? Because the idea is, is that they, they, the, the experimentation being done in the project um, serves a direct purpose of national policy and therefore it's not, it doesn't stay at the level of recommendation. It, it will be implemented. So we can discuss this and um, I'm very happy to, to also meet you maybe sometime. We've already spoken about this before. It's obviously not that easy to get um, uh, ministries involved, but, but um, we, we have ministries who, who would be interested to, uh, to, do, to, to have adult projects so we can maybe um, have an informal meeting to, to, for, for networking in this area. Then finally, I'm, I'm uh, um, finally, I'm, uh, I would like to just mention EURDC, um, which is um, a network um, of national units in, 80, um, in 38 countries, um, normally hosted within the ministries of education. And there's a, a big variety of, of studies, which um, I've, when I read the report, I saw that sometimes, for instance, there's 
some difficulty in, in having coherent descript descriptions about education systems and also that there's some discrepancy in the vocabulary used. For this, Eurydice is really handy. You don't have to rewrite something which already exists. For instance, there's Euripedia, which describes the education system. And this is very helpful when you kick off a project um, for partners to have a look if you need to understand what, what the adult education sector looks like in Italy, in Germany, in Bosnia, or I don't know where, then you have a comprehensive overview in the Europedia. It's like Wikipedia, and you click on one country, you look at a certain education level, and then you, you, you switch uh, to another country, and this, the, the tool is made in such a way that when you click to the other country, you stay at the same level. So it's very easy to, um, to compare uh, the systems. There are, also, there are also other interesting studies like this one on structural indicators. So if you're, if when, you're, when you're setting up a project and you're discussing what kind of you, your work, you, you decide, for instance, in your methodology to have a logical framework, what kind of indicators should we use? Well, the, these um, studies are very, very helpful. Um, it covers the whole educational spectrum from early childhood education until um, adult education and gives you structural indicators for all the various levels. So again, very helpful. This also is a very um, helpful report, support mechanisms for evidence-based policy making in education. So again, you have the contribution from the um, 43 national units uh, from, the, from the different member states. And um, what, what's more, all the Eurydice, the mo most of the Eurydice uh, publications are translated into the official languages. So also, this is always when you're at grassroots level, it's often very important to have, you know, to have an understanding at the European level. So that, that's probably, as is the case for you in English, then you have <laughs> the, this kind of report with the English vocabulary, but for the, for the, um, for the work at the grassroots level, you also have um, the, same, the same study in, in the national language, so that that helps to, to make it uh, more coherent when, when you have to do country reports, for instance. So that's just what I, I wanted to mention. And then... Thank I'm, you. I'm Thank you very much, questions. Eric. Uh, <clears throat> we will have some time, hopefully, after the next presentation to, uh, to ask some questions. Sure. from the key, keynote speakers and be, before we, because we are just running into into uh, we're running out of uh, the the time we, we allocated yeah. for this first part i would like just to quickly uh, move to the to the last presenter the last speaker andrea giacomelli uh, who is from italy uh, representing naip friuli venezia giulia uh, but he will better present himself hello andrea uh, Hello everybody, can you hear me? And uh, so I can share my screen. So it's okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. So I start my presentation and uh, first of all, I would like to spend just a few words about uh, who is ANIP. NET is the organization with which I, I've been working for a long time. As you can see, uh, with this first uh, slide, NAP is, uh, NAP Net is one of the larger providers consortia in Italy with over 1,400 employees and much more external collaborators and with more than uh, 40,000 students per year. So it is a big uh, uh, organization in Italy. But also in uh, Europe, uh, NAP Net uh, plays uh, a vital role by continuing collaborating with uh, uh, some leading vet providers associations that are that uh, at the European level uh, have been promoting since a long time uh, the excellence of the vet system according to the European strategy, of course. So this is uh, a brief presentation of my organization. So I have to, to prepare uh, my contribution both as a vet trainer, as a manager of scaling and replacement actions for uh, low skilled people. So my presentation is a bit different uh, respect to the previous representations. Therefore, I have decided to present a general reflection and some suggestions to improve the effectiveness of the upskilling and reskilling pathway, starting from my personal experience in on the field. Just my point of view to contribute to the discussion during the web uh, seminar or beyond is, is uh, would be possible. 
I've taken inspiration from my PhD research, okay, and uh, pilot election lasted three years, aims at upskilling artisan over 55 to use of digital technology, so to acquire digital skills or basic skills in, to use in their work, and so that rethink the fundamental role in the new competitive environment. So this is was uh, the purposes of my PhD research and pilot action. So uh, I will briefly cover the next three slides, which contain uh, some essential data to support my reflection, but uh, I quickly go on. These uh, three slides highlight a situation that is uh, known to all. Everybody you will know well. Uh, we find a, a high rate of the population aged between 25 and 64 or in a broad sense, like my colleague before uh, has uh, already said, uh, is in a potential need to acquire a better level of basic skill, especially digital ones, to remain competitive. I want to highlight the, the, this aspect that the older people are the category most affected by the risk of social exclusion, even before losing their job. Shops from my point of view, of course. This slide shows the breakdown of the target population into age groups and shows that 32% are between the ages of 55 and 74. If you consider this data with the forecast regarding the rapid aging of the European population, we realize clearly how important it is to focus on active aging policy and action. That is the general focus of, uh, of my uh, last uh, uh, PhD research. So this uh, I go on because uh, we have, uh, we have already seen uh, that data and uh, the same for Italy is that uh, probably the situation is even worse, so, as you can see uh, from this graph. So, but I want to examine, to analyze the participation rate. The participation rate is very low, as you can see with this slide, but in a special way, I would like to highlight that uh, the characteristic of this participation that is a non-formal informal nature, has a non-formal informal nation, is a short duration, and uh, it's about company-specific skills. This aspect is a problem because uh, it doesn't allow them to acquire the basic skills that would enable to remain competitive in a continually evolving work environment. They learn specific skills that can quickly become obsolete and that are not useful for supporting career transition paths. There is a lot, from my point of view, there is a, a total lack of a work dimension on the ability to remain active and competitive, thus maintaining the freedom of action in the labor market. This is a lack of capacity building, a sort of capacity building that increasing the working agency, the agency of these people to uh, rethink their uh, professional, personal, professional path. I think that the capability approach, it might be useful to design and implement innovative upskilling pathways because it works on the internal and external condition to boost the ability to develop freely one's personal and professional project. If we want to give a, a short definition of a capability approach, we can say that people's capabilities are the real opportunity to do and be what they, they, reason, they have reason to value. So what uh, is important for them. So the motivation of why the, the, there is a so little participation in uh, adult training, education and training system, because uh, mainly for, for my point of view is that uh, there is a, a lack of motivation and uh, in a special way, a lack of understanding of the need for the learning, for learning are important barriers to participation. So 
uh, sometimes or most of the times in, in my experience, uh, uh, people uh, mm, don't understand the need to learn, uh, continue to learn, and, uh, uh, in order to uh, have more opportunity to uh, re uh, get in a new job. So I am starting by uh, um, a document made by CEDEFOP, uh, the CEDEFOP analytic framework for develop upskilling pathways for adults. And uh, I try to uh, consider what CEDEFOP proposes with the key area six of the document, dedicated to outreach activities. So a sort of piece that is before to the first step of the methodology to uh, upskilling pathways. In that case, it seems that we have to work in a phase before and or in preparation for the first step dedicated to the skill assessment. It suggests, in my opinion, to work on the awareness and understanding of one's potential and on the usefulness of acquiring new skills, such as digital ones, to carry out on one's project. It also seems to suggest doing all this by adopting a, a cooperative and experiential approach carried out in an informal and open peer learn environment involving the community at the local level. So this is my, my proposal, what uh, I've done in my PhD research and uh, experimental project and uh, repeat at increasing participation in adult education and training system of people with low skills by focuses on three, uh, these, these three uh, assets. Self-directed learning, so increased understanding of the need to grow continuously but in a way aimed at uh, one's project. So that uh, by enhancing autonomy and responsibility of the, of the people, of the person. The capacity, the capability approach, work on one's resources to increase the agency, increase the agency so the freedom to decide and uh, by improving internal and external condition Shortly, we can say, or we can call this uh, working on the conversion factors. So uh, that uh, condition that con uh, help the person to, to uh, increase the uh, understanding of the need to grow continuously. Experiment with a new flexible guidance model, as I said for framework, uh, uh, seems to suggest. So a new flexible guidance model that uh, makes the best use of innovative spaces for collaboration and cooperation learning, such as co-working and fab lab. So this is uh, the, the general uh, aspects of my proposal and my previous uh, experience uh, in order to help uh, low-skilled people to improve uh, the condition in general. So with the following two slides, I have uh, summarized the main characteristic of the path that involved about uh, 100 senior artisans based on individual projects. So just an, an 100 senior artisans, senior artisans. The individual project adopted a methodology of design thinking and took place with a co-working within the co-working, using the space, the open space, the open learning environment as, as, it, as it is a, a co-working. The learning of digital skills took place at their request and according to needs of the individual innovation project. So they could use free mentors or work with co-workers, generally qualified young people. So they could decide when and how use the learning opportunity of the elves in general that in that specific open uh, learning environment there were. This pedagogical approach 
as favored their awareness of the usefulness of technology without damaging the identity of the craftsman because their personal growth has been entirely self-directed. So, uh, I, I'm going to conclude my presentation with some uh, lesson learned. Of this slide, I would like to emphasize, so I, I, I don't uh, uh, repeat uh, uh, each point of the lesson learned, but just uh, give you uh, a general uh, comment about uh, them. So if this, of this slide, uh, repeat, I would like to emphasize in particular the understanding of how important it is to reactivate the person practically and experientially before proceeding to an analysis of their competencies. I think it is appropriate to allow him to reflect by doing, for instance, comparing himself with other people, sharing the knowledge with other uh, uh, mentor or expert in general, so on. Co-working spaces can therefore can become a reactivation place even for low skilled and older people. As my research project has shown, I think quite clearly in base of the evidence at the end of the activities. So finally, I would like to draw the attention of policymakers to the need to integrate these kinds of new open spaces, co-work and fab lab, for peer learning and innovation into the VET system. So it uh, uh, have, has to become uh, an important uh, node of the, of the wider, broader uh, network uh, in, in a special way at the local level. We have to give them so a new role that goes on, goes beyond the rhetoric of innovative startup made only by young people with very high skills. The same model, I think, can also be useful for adopting new, flexible, experimental and personalized ways of reactivating older and uh, old, low skilled people in general as I think the set for key area six seems to suggest. So this is my uh, contribution uh, to the discussion. I think I, I take just a few minutes, so I respect the, the allowed time. Perfectly, thank you very much, Andrea, for your sharing us with your, uh, your experiences and uh, recommendations and lessons learned. Uh, now we are well into the coffee break, <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't like to miss the chance while our speakers are with us uh, to, to ask some questions, if you may have from them. William, Eve, Eric, Andrea are still with us. If you have any questions, this is a time to ask, please. Yes, we're here. <laughs> So anyone can just uh, openly open your microphone and, and feel free to, to ask questions. Maybe, maybe I can uh, take the floor. I just saw that there were two comments in, uh, in the chat about the presentation. Is that okay? Absolutely. Yeah, okay, I'll refer to that. So I'm very happy to see that um, Yekaterina already said that you are planning to to, um, to um, publish on ePALE, so that, that's very good. Um, when, you, when you do so, also let me know, because when projects um, I'm, I'm working with uh, do this, I also give um, some extra attention and, and disseminate a bit, so to, make, to, to raise awareness about that. And then uh, Magdalena um, has a comment on the um, ex post evaluation. Um, yes, that, that I, think, I think, you know, that, I think it, it, that's exactly true, that it, it is, of course, very difficult, but, but um, you know, that's something, that's something we should really 
uh, try to reach for and it is something we should be we should start a discussion on now in view of the new in view of the new program which will start which will start next year F from my point of view i can i can see two things i mean you have a big network um you for instance you have a you have a steering committee which is very good so maybe they it it you could ask them to 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 think about it and and to to get their expertise how to take such a thing forward as a long term strategy um, because i think that 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 is what what if we if if you want to do it that's something um something um uh, which, which could be an idea I, quite frankly, I mean, when you look at the thousands and thousands of projects we have um, under Erasmus Plus, that there is not one which does this. Okay, there's an, we we never had an application where where a network said, okay, we finished this project three years ago. Now we're going to evaluate impact and try to look into outcome definition. And and I think you know this is especially exciting in the context of. Uh, what William also presented, and um, the, and Eve, um, that that there's that there are all these updates coming along the new Europass. You know how how would it be? You know if if we if we look at the new Europass, I've worked in Europass myself before. The annexes in Europass they work well. To have an annex which 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 takes into account the levels of digit comp comp, but also learning outcomes and to, to for instance, um, look into the possibility that people don't only um, have an annex when they did a training, but that there's an annex about um, their experience, which would be different from a CV. I mean, in the CV, you cover your professional, your professional experience, but what about real learning outcomes? And you, you did a training and then as a, as a person now I can share, I can tell you, okay, three years later, um, th this was very useful and this is what was, I, I was able to achieve. So these, these are just um, things at the top of my mind. And as I said, um, I'm, I'm very happy, Peter, we've discussed um, these things before. One concrete idea for you, and I encourage you really to look into that, is for the next call on the policy experimentation to look into that because if you if you do this it will mean a lot of investment and it would be good if if it would it could be an experimentation project yeah to experiment okay we will we will run a we will run a project where we will take one of our previous projects and and look and evaluate and outcomes and and and, and look at that you have a lot of digital very high quality digital projects the one i mentioned with the 96 score this would be perfect to do such okay. an experimentation thank and you very much the advantage again would be, you know, they're coordinated by ministry, so so the chance of real quick implementation and involvement, direct involvement with policy, I think your network is is ready for that. So that that that's that's just an idea um, to 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 take uh, to take it to the future. Thank you, Eric. <clears throat> Are there any other questions uh, to the speakers? <clears throat> If not, then I would like to propose a break. Uh, originally, it was planned for t uh, 20 minutes. Let's shorten it to 15 minutes, if you agree, and uh, restart with the second part of this conference at 15.50, uh, 3.50. So uh, I would like to take the opportunity to, to thank again to our speakers, our presenters, uh, to, uh, for their contributions to the to the to this to, uh, to this event, and uh, in the second part, we are looking we are going to look into the project itself in more details. So, see you in 15 minutes. Just stay in line, and you can even take the opportunity to to speak with each other. Thank you, Peter. Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks, William.
You there? Yes, Andrea, you can start your presentation if you like. I just wanted to, to check if the microphone is working. Uh, it is working properly. So, Andrea, if you like, you can share your screen for the next presentation. Okay, welcome back. I hope you had a good coffee, at least a virtual one, but hopefully a real one uh, in this, in this, uh, during the break. Uh, I would like to uh, start the second part of the event and introduce you Andrea Ranelletti, European Project Manager at ERI4 the Italian agency, which is coordinating the project. And Andrea has been coordinating the Asperger project. So he's the best resource uh, to present uh, the achievements, the outputs, the results, and any further plans we have. And you will be doing it with Andrea together with, uh, with, with Nicole, uh, representative of our uh, technical partner from Best Cy Cybernetics. Andrea, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, thank you very much to World Digital for uh, the, the incredible work that has been done in preparing this final conference, this final conference here on Zoom. It's great to have uh, a big audience to present what we have been realizing over the last three months, three years, sorry, of work uh, with all these uh, beautiful partnerships that helped us in shaping the Ask for Job. Right now we are heading towards the end of the project. It's uh, finishing in a couple of days. Everything is already online. I will introduce everybody to the content of the project. And then, uh, as Peter said, uh, Best Cybernetics, Nicole from Best Cybernetics will introduce us, the technical. Uh, um, we'll do a, a presentation of um, the open electronic resources that have been realized within the context of the project. The, the massive open online uh, course that's already available on the platform. Okay. Before, uh, before starting, I would like to say a couple of words about ERIFO, uh, the organization in which I work. ERIFO is uh, based in Rome and it's a non-profit organization that provides services for employment, services for vocational education and training and uh, builds adult education pathways. It is a member of uh, at, uh, the European Vocational Training, uh, uh, the, the European Association of uh, Vocational and Training, uh, Vocational Education and Training Centers. And uh, here you have the link to the website uh, of our organization. Let me just go quickly through the concept of the project. As for job, uh, aim at developing a pan-European uh, approach for supporting low-skilled, long-term unemployed adults in finding new opportunities for their professional and personal development. It does so uh, by building a pathway that aims at uh, supporting the social inclusion of these individuals, providing them with new tools that can help them not only in achieving new competencies, digital competencies in our case, but also in understanding how to take the maximum profit from what they are achieving so not only digital competencies but also the cognitive competencies that will help this person in uh, finding new opportunities for their lives at large not only from the professional point of view but also uh, from the personal point of view this has been done by increasing the demand and take up to effective outreach uh, guidance and motivation strategies and in particular, extending and developing the uh, competencies of educators. How did we do this? We uh, created a series of outputs that uh, support adults in developing digital and cognitive skills on one side. And on the other side, we 
still um, tools that can help also the labor market operators and adults, educators and trainers uh, in using these, uh, these tools and applying these tools when they support uh, unemployed adults who are looking for new job opportunities. Um, this goes straight to uh, our target group, our main target group, which is adults with low skills, medium or long term unemployed, ideally individuals uh, who are more than 30 years old, even if uh, we, the, the test that has been done has also included other kinds of uh, um, representatives of this group. And on the other side, we aim at uh, supporting adult educators and trainers, employment operators who are looking for new tools and strategies for supporting um, their, their, their customers. This is how uh, the project was designed. It was based, uh, it was built in 2017, as I said, it's a three years project, so it started back in uh, September 2017. It was built on the basis of the recommendation of our upskilling pathways. Uh, the, re the recommendation prescribed a, a, a three-pronged approach that started with a skill assessment, moved to the development of a tailored offer of education and training on the basis of the assessment that was performed at the end. And at the end of this, uh, um, this educational upskilling, the individual had to reach a new validation and recognition of the competencies of the learning outcomes that were acquired. Uh, Ask for Job was built on this um, on this uh, on this basis through three different outputs that we will uh, explore more in depth a little bit later. The first one, which is a SES, which is the skills assessment tool, it's a, a methodology for assessing the digital competencies of these individuals and helping them in finding new opportunities uh, for. Um, developing new digital competencies. The second intellectual output, which is the MOOC and the Capability Labs. On one side, we provide, this is a blended approach. On one side, we provide the, 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 the massive open online course on digital and cognitive abilities. And on the other side, we put uh, the, 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 what was learned on the platform, we put it in practice thanks to a laboratory activity that aimed at the uh, help this person, our target group, in understanding how to take the maximum profit of what, from what we learn. And the third intellectual output was a, a, a quite big um, work of piloting that was done uh, throughout the last months in order to understand how um, it, it, what was uh, the, the, the result of the project and to develop the, the final exploitation guideline that I will share a little bit later with you. No need to say uh, more words about Digicomp 2.1. The project was built on this basis. Uh, it was structured, especially for what concerns, of course, the digital competencies part on the on the basis of the five areas of Digicomp, but with a strong, um, we, we put a lot of attention also in uh, taking care of the cognitive abilities um, that were, uh, that are going to support users in uh, understanding how to put these digital competencies in practice to find new job opportunities. That's the main purpose and maybe the main uh, element of uh, element of significance of this project, working not only on the digital upskilling, but also supporting the individual in doing a strong work of self-reflection in order to understand how to move on and build something new for himself. A few words about the team. Um, a lot of work will be, uh, a lot of, uh, work has been done in order to support partners from nine different countries, 11 partners from nine different countries in uh, working together and building a, a common language, something that could help them in interacting in a, in a proficient and effective way in order to build what we had to build. It was complicated, but yet it, I think it's the main point of strength of the project because uh, the, the approach is really translational in the, in the stronger sense that this work can have. As you can see, we have partners from Bulgaria, Italy, Spain, Greece, Poland, Sweden, uh, Lithuania. And then we had also all digital that is in Belgium, but of course it's a European network. This means that the outreach, the final outreach of the project products will be even bigger. The partners uh, were um, from Poland, we had IPED and AHE Loads. Uh, from uh, Greece, we had the, the Directory for Secondary Education of Scania and Best Cybernetics, which is the technical the SAP partner. From Sweden, we had uh, Fox Public. We have had um, 
good good to get this kind of some liquid from uh, from Turkey and then SKG from Spain, um, Bite SMT from uh, Lithuania, and then uh, we have the FT from uh, Bulgaria. This is the partnership. Later, you will get to know a little bit more about all these partners because each partner will do a quick presentation about what were the result of the pilot activities that have been done, what was the, the impact of the project on the two target groups that were activated in each of the countries, so um, adult learners, adult unemployed adults, and uh, uh, adult, uh, adult uh, education centers and employment centers. Let's go a little bit more in detail, even if there will be more time to, to check these parts uh, with uh, best cybernetics in a few minutes. The first intellectual output we assess is the, 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 the quiz that aim at assessing the level of digital um, proficiency through an online quiz. It is based on the five areas of the digital. We wanted to understand what's the level of those who, under, who, who are undertaking uh, the, the ask for job pathway if they are at a basic or a intermediate level in order to guide them through the MOOC and give them a kind of um, learning offer that's tailored on their needs. The SES was not built uh, in a day. It was a long work since, since the beginning. We did a, a, a quite consistent research work. We did a long set of workshops in each of the countries of the partnership to understand what were the needs, what were the kind of skills were supposed to help these individuals in building a new competencies that could be pro profitable for their professional lives. So we spoke with uh, adult learners, we spoke with representatives of uh, employment centers, we spoke with uh, potential employers in order to understand what would have been the most relevant um, information that we wanted to have to, to shape this kind of, of output. The second output of the project was uh, the massive open online course, which is quite, uh, uh, it, it was quite a massive work in, in all senses because uh, it, it's, it's, it's a big output. It provides uh, uh, both uh, the, the, the digital and the cognitive of, of skill intent to the five um, sections that are tailored on the digital and on one section that's tailored on the digital providing cognitive skills, new cognitive information on how to develop new cognitive skills for the individual. And then, uh, of course, users have been uh, put in the condition of following with what level they deem as more relevant for their purposes, so basic or intermediate. Then the second intellectual output also developed the guidelines for these capability labs, which were the kind of activities that originally had to be done face to face after <clears throat> we decided also to, 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 to create uh, guidelines for virtual laboratories due to the COVID crisis. We had to reshape this, uh, this part of the project. And they are aimed, as I said before, in to increase the awareness of the digital competencies and how to use them in the job search phase with a strong and uh, immediate support from the operator that's uh, working in the organization. That helping these individuals in undertaking the, the as for job pathway. Uh, just did this couple of slides for giving a quick example. So uh, after um, the, the user does the first area, for instance, if he follows the MOOC in the information and data literacy sector, um, after that, he does not only understand how to, to browse for data, how to read uh, the, the information that he finds on the internet. He also has to understand how to use internet critically to find the job opportunities. So in the capability laboratory, the user, the operator, the employment operator, the adult education operator is going to support this user, this user in understanding how to do this thing. And maybe he can do a lot of uh, different uh, tasks like uh, looking for five job vacancies, evaluating the reliability under the assistance of the operator, and then check if he really understood how to do what he learned in the MOOC. This is another example for the communication and collaboration area, for instance, using digital tools and devices for operating uh, in a work setting. So the, the, the operator can help the individual in creating a calendar and finding a new agenda of appointments, even if it seems something that could be relevant, not only for finding a job, but also uh, when the individual would find uh, a job for moving uh, confidently on the work environment. 
This is just uh, an anticipation of what will be said by your partners that will speak after me. Uh, the pilot program, the IFP, this is the way in which the pilot program was shaped. There was a first phase of the method in selection of the participants that would have take part, uh, the, the pilot, sorry, the pilot program was uh, delivered on 20 users in each country. This means like uh, uh, 160 users were involved and received a certificate at the end of this pilot program. The first part is the selection of participants. Uh, the second part is the preparation of participants, while the third part is the moment in which the individual um, takes the self-evaluation uh, quiz and does the MOOC, follows the MOOC. After that, you get the capability labs and then you give this individual the final uh, recognition of the learning outcomes. So the evaluation of what he learned uh, throughout his task for job experiences. Uh, this is what uh, we need for validation. The user at the end has to describe um, what he learned in an active way during the pathway, thanks to the, the support of the operator. At the same time, the operator is going to certify what the user learned during the, uh, the export job pathway in a document uh, that will uh, be attached to a final certificate and will give a, a also to the individual an open batch code that the individual can put the, 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 the the user can put on his curriculum in order to, to prove that he uh, followed the S4 job pathway and grew new competencies, uh, uh, new digital skills thanks to this, uh, this, uh, this pathway. I'm leaving this uh, just a few words before leaving the space to Nicola. I, I didn't even take the time, so I don't know if, I, if I've been uh, in the 15 minutes uh, regularly. Uh, just a few words about uh, we will do our best to keep. Uh, since we have been speaking before about this, uh, the importance of sustainability, the importance of impact, the importance of transferability, we are preparing a, a, a series of pledge, pledges of uh, association to ask for a job. That means that we are going to uh, send these pledges, uh, we, we are going to do a, a work of publicity to the project in order to, to receive new pledges uh, uh, in each country and uh, guarantee the fact that the methodology that we are developing uh, will be used and applied also by uh, other employment centers, other uh, adult education and training centers all over Europe, not only in the countries uh, of the partnership, but also in other countries. We are very interested in doing this kind of work. We already started and got some, also already some information about potential interested organization, for instance, uh, one from Germany recently, uh, but we want to do more uh, for, for this. And then just a couple of words about uh, new uh, ideas that we are collecting. We wanted to know if there are uh, here organizations that have ever applied the Digicom Edu framework. Uh, we are interested in understanding how to develop something like uh, possibly a new project proposal based on Digicom Edu uh, for supporting the vocational education and training centers, uh, educators working in that providers. Uh, so if uh, there is any of you who has experience in this, uh, in this specific field, we are free to leave, uh, to drop a message here at the, uh, the email address that's here on the last slide. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm completely available for uh, responding to your questions here or via email. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Andrea. It was a very... Uh, focus presentation uh, we, we, and, and we already received a couple of questions about how the results are accessible and I think we can say that everything is available at the, the project website uh, from where also the platform should be available for everyone who is interested in trying experimenting it right and I'd like to invite Nicole uh, from Best Cybernetics to uh, to continue this uh, presentation. What Andrea just uh, 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 well finished the first part, and you can present the MOOC. Thank you, Peter. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Yes, it's, it's it's fine. Thank you. Let's try to to, Just, to fit into the ten minute time frame. Thank you. Okay, so my name is Nicole Giorgogiani. I'm representing the company Best Cybernetics, which is located in Patras in Greece. 
let me say a few words about our company. Uh, BESA Benetics is a private independent software development company, but we are also a uh, consulting and training company. Uh, our company was founded in uh, 2009, and uh, our main um, work is to develop programs uh, which are uh, on the use and application of information communication technology, technologies in the education, training, and business sectors. Our main areas of expertise are the design and development uh, of uh, software, and especially custom web applications. Uh, we are also um, uh, focused on the design and development of e-learning platforms and uh, e-learning uh, courses uh, and that was our main uh, um, let's say role in uh, ask for job project uh, we have been focused on the development of uh, the online uh, assessment tool and uh, the the mock uh, with the uh, training models uh, developed within the project framework. Uh, so, uh, let's say a few words about the online assessment tool, uh, which is dedicated for uh, assessing the digital competencies of low qualified um, people and which is adapted to the Digicom uh, tool. Uh, point zero framework uh, to the upskilling needs, uh, as I said, of long-term unemployed adults, but uh, which is also um, um, targeting, addressing to strengthen the digital and technological uh, competencies. Uh, the system uh, evaluates uh, the level of, prof of proficiency of the digital uh, skills and also proposes at the end of the evaluation of the assessment an upskilling pathway uh, tailored to the uh, user needs, which means that the system uh, proposes at the end of the assessment specific uh, courses uh, that are related uh, to the digital gaps identified uh, from the assessment. The second intellectual output uh, that um, this is uh, a screenshot uh, from the online assessment tool that I'm going to present you in a few minutes also online. Uh, but uh, let me say a few words also for the mock that we have developed uh, within the project in implementation. Uh, so the other, uh, the other uh, platform which uh, was developed from Best Cybernetics is a massive open online course uh, targeting, uh, as we said, the digital competencies of low uh, low uh, qualified uh, people. Uh, it's uh, a self-directed training platform, which means that the users are not uh, uh, obliged um, um, to be followed by uh, a trainer or a consultant uh, to follow the training program. It's a multilingual learning platform uh, all the uh, materials and the training models are available in English, in Italian, in Bulgarian, Polish, Greek, Turkish, Spanish, Swedish, and Lithuanian. It's an intuitive and easy to navigate platform. And most importantly, it's a, a responsive platform, which means that it is available and um, uh, accessible from all devices, uh, smartphones, tablets, and uh, desktops, and uh, so on. 
So uh, let's have a look uh, at the two uh, tools. Nicola, I'm afraid we have lost your voice. Sorry? We have lost your voice. Uh, we didn't hear you in the last few moments. Yes, I, share, I, I, I said that I'm going to share, uh, to share with you uh, the, the mock and the online assessment just to go through very quickly of the two tools. Uh, can you see the mock? Peter? Um, I'm, I'm not uh, nice. ready for that. Um, Andrea, are you? Or? No, we see the slides. <sighs> okay, sorry. I need to change the screen. Ah, okay, okay, sharing. okay. Okay, now it uh, is. Yeah. I understood that um, when I share my screen, uh, uh, I can share everything, but uh, uh, so here we are um, in, uh, uh, this is online, the, the mock uh, of the project. So the user uh, can have access uh, from the mock both uh, to the uh, online assessment which is called here Digital Knowledge Quiz. And uh, he can uh, log in and follow the um, follow the questions. Uh, can you see my screen now, uh, Peter? Yes, yes, and we can see a capture. Okay, sorry. So this is for security reasons. Oh, I forgot my password. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry for this. Uh, we'll go back to uh, the mock and try to uh, to log in in the online assessment. So uh, from the mock, the user have access uh, to all the training courses, which are, um, um, as I said, available in all uh, partner organization languages and uh, the, the user can find uh, both uh, the digital competencies courses but also uh, the capability uh, modules uh, which is named techniques and strategies to enhance cognitive abilities and uh, uh, all uh, the five areas uh, uh, the training, fi the five training areas uh, are, uh, um, let's say, um, in two levels, the basic and intermediate level. Uh, the first one is the info and data literacy. The second theme is communication and collaboration, digital content creation, 
problem solving and safety. These are the five basic educational areas. And uh, the user can view here the units for the basic level and also for the intermediate level. Uh, each level uh, consists of different units uh, which are uh, composed from uh, presentations and quizzes. The user can follow the presentation, but uh, he can also uh, he can also uh, do the quizzes. And the presentations are also uh, they uh, they are uh, let's say available uh, also with a voiceover. Information, as you can see here. And with a timeline so that you can uh, pause and continue uh, the, the training uh, material. And he can also uh, download the user uh, all the uh, presentation and the material in PDF format, save it and print it uh, for uh, self-directed uh, learning at home. And uh, as I said, he can uh, continue with uh, doing the quizzes, which are online tests. And uh, the online quizzes are automatically, uh, let's say, um, uh, responding from the system. So we are talking for self-evaluation quizzes. <clears throat> Nico, sorry for interrupting you. Uh, we are running out of time a little bit yes. and we still okay. have the lightning talk of the partners. Okay. So the, yes, sorry, sorry, Peter. Thank you. Just, uh, just to finish my presentation. Uh, of course, from uh, our presentation, the, the uh, people can, uh, the participants can uh, go through uh, the online assessment and the mock and they can uh, send their comments. Uh, for uh, uh, for uh, evaluation, uh, just to say a few uh, last few words uh, about um, what is the most important uh, part right now for developing digital competencies. Uh, as another speaker said, COVID nineteen has changed how the world functions. Uh, illustrating the limitations of uh, many existing systems and highlighting the need to reimagine the role of information technology. Uh, so it is imperative that businesses and governments digitize their operations and it is imperative to digitally transform our workforce and uh, reskill uh, in this new era through digital training. This is the most important thing that uh, Ask for Job Tools uh, has uh, responded. Uh, it, 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 it responds to these needs. So thank you very much, everybody. Mm. Thank you, Peter.
thank you so much, Nicole. I'm, I'm sorry for uh, rushing or uh, you know, interrupting you, but uh, I think we need to, we, we try to finish on time and uh, we still have an interesting part left, uh, which is a very quick lightning talk uh, style of presentation of our grassroots partners about uh, their organization, their ask for job experience, any lessons learned, and any future plans they have. And uh, we have eight very short presentations, and uh, we ask the partners to, to, to make it in four minutes each. Uh, so it's going to be a challenge, but please take this challenge. And first, I'd like to ask our Bulgarian partner to present. Can you see my uh, screen? Very well, thank you. Okay, so um, uh, I'm Nadia from the Bulgarian Ask for Job Partner. We are Business Foundation for Education. This is a Bulgarian non-governmental organization, which is established in 2009, uh, 2005, sorry, sorry. And since then, we have represented for the Bulgarian territory an international program for career counselors and have already trained more than 1,000 people under this program. We have also participated in more than 40 European projects. Some of them have been recognized as good practices. One of them has been recognized as a success story on European level. In our work, we work with really all target groups possible, and we have worked with public institutions, with private companies, with schools and universities. Uh, you see the presentation, and also you can go to our website and Facebook page to learn more. But just to be short, I, I really wanted to um, say a few more words about why uh, are we in the project. Besides that, we have been very experienced in European projects, but also working with career counselors, mentors, or people working with unemployed people. We also represent the country that unfortunately uh, is uh, ranked at the lowest level for digital skills uh, possession of its population. It's really strange because on certain indicators, we are far ahead in IT sector, but actually for our target group, we are on the last place in Europe. And what is even more uh, unpleasant for, for what is going on here is that uh, we are way below the average uh, index of the European Union. For, so for this reason, as for job project is really important for us because on one hand, we have so many people that need improvement or uh, acquisition of these skills on the other hand, we have a lot of people that already work with unemployed people, but they need really innovative and easy to use tools. And we really have noticed the uh, attractiveness that the self-assessment tool has among uh, both the unemployed people and the people working with them, but also the topics that our partnership has uh, selected and also the content that is really presented in a clear way. So we, we, what we have noticed in Bulgaria and we have already received this feedback during the whole process, but especially in the piloting, is that really people can get uh, advantage of, of this project. And um, to finish, uh, I, I want to say that we have already received um, the declared interest of several organizations to use what we have produced and we're really happy to say that among them is the employment agency of Bulgaria so uh, after the project they really are interested in using what we have produced on their website for the people that they work with and at the end I just want to say that for us it was really an interesting project we learned a lot as professionals but also what I want to share is that the partnership was really great and uh, it was a pleasure to work with all the partners and I hope we will make new projects together. And I invite everybody that is from outside of the 
partnership and is attending this uh, conference to go on the website, try the self-assessment tool, try the um, theoretical part, also the quizzes, and I'm sure you will learn new things and you will find people whom you can recommend it. Thank you from Bulgaria. Thank you very much. Great job, uh, a lot of achievements, and thank you also to, uh, for engaging another country already, North Macedonia, where uh, you yes. collaborate and, and you already you know, extended uh, the Ask for Job um, to, to another non-project country, which is a great uh, achievement. So, um, thank you again. Let's go now to Lithuania uh, and uh, uh, for the present of Byte Adult Education Center. Hello, hello everybody now. Hi. <laughs> can, you, can you share your screen? Yes, yes, yes. Wait, wait a okay, Christina, thank you. Here it is. Okay. Can you see? Yes, hello? perfectly, thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm Christina from Beta Adult Education Center from Vilnius, Lithuania. Uh, and it's a pity that we have this meeting in this way instead of meeting in Brussels because our team really is great. <laughs> and okay, I will talk about our organization shortly. It's Adult Education Center, which was founded in 1994 and here, uh, can can learn everybody who is more than 18 years old. It's never too late to learn. And here you can get primary or basic education if you didn't finish your secondary school for very various reasons. Or you can learn subject specific non formal models, different foreign languages, <laughs> you can SSA, sewing, wool felting, dancing, yoga. And our center is for those who seek new skills and, and knowledge required for professional career and life. And this project was very interesting for us. And I was trying to summarize what, what we achieved. Uh, unemployed people was not very target group of our center and it was a new challenge for us. And I can say that now we can work more effectively with unemployed people and organizations that help unemployed people. And with the help of the partners and the participation of the whole Beta ISC team, a lot of lessons we together created, uh, which were about IT and cognitive skills. And we are going to use those lessons, not only during this project, but also after we, 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 we finish it. And all digital technology and cognitive skills are learned by both learners and teachers. And a lot of beta adult education center teachers from different fields participated in this project. And I think we all developed our cooperation skills together. Any lessons learned? Uh, teaching and learning using a distance learning platforms is, we are using it, but it's still a challenge for all of us. So it was very good for both teachers and learners. And also working in such a multicultural large team as it was in Ask for Job project, it was very exciting. It was first time when we had a project with such many partners and we really learned many new methods, ways of working, opportunities and activities for adults. And it is never too late to learn about new opportunities in the world of digital technology, especially for teachers. <laughs> What next? We would like to continue working using those remote or distance platforms and to use the knowledge we gained during this project. And as I mentioned before, lessons we, we created with our team, we are going to use in our educational process and later. And uh, the last thing that we are looking forward to continuing to work with those wonderful partners and great project coordinators involved in this project. And I felt really that they have given so much heart and work that makes this project really a success. So that's my short presentation. Thank you for everybody. Absolutely great, Christina. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Wait, 
So you can just uh, yeah close your screen. Yeah. Fantastic. And now we are going to the beautiful island of Crete, uh, to the city of Hania uh, in Greece. Hopefully. Yeah. Sarah, I, I, we can't hear you. Now it should be okay. Can you try to speak? Uh, we cannot hear you. I think it's not on, not only me, right? Who can't hear anything, unfortunately. It doesn't work. No. Yeah. Um, Kara, try to check your microphone settings. Take your time uh, while we are moving one country ahead and we will come back to you. Uh, so if you could close your presentation, please, and check your settings and we'll try a little bit later. Then, then let's go to, to the little bit colder, but still very beautiful Sweden, uh, Fox Populi. Jacob? You have your presentation. Can you share your screen? I've seen Jacob being with us previously. Uh, again, I can Sorry. hear him. Yes, now we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so sorry, Jacob. It's not good again. Um, it's an issue with the device, I think. Yeah, it's a plug-in issue, probably. No, you cannot hear me now. Uh, very weak voice, very weak. But in now? a moment ago, it was good. And now it's, uh, we can hear you, but hardly. Oh, okay. Okay. Meanwhile, can I just double check if uh, anyone from Fox Populi, Fox Populi is with us? I don't see Jacob. Okay, then uh, let's give another try with Cara. Ah, now, now it's good again. Now it's, it's good now. Okay. Stay like this. <laughs> I'll don't, try not don't move. move. Don't move. I'll try not. Lost you again. It feels there is a problem with the cable connection. It's, it's something with the cable. If you could. No. Okay, maybe, okay, Kara, we will come back to you, try to solve this issue, and uh, I think we will skip Sweden for the moment. Can you hear me now? No, it's, it's the same. So we will come back to you, okay? And, uh, and, and let's try to try with Spain now. Uh, FYG from Valencia. Yeah, yeah. Hello, good afternoon. Hi. I'm going to sh share my screen. Perfect. If you allow me, I am not allowed yet. Everyone is allowed. Ah, yeah, but as Greece is sharing, yeah. Nara is sharing. Yeah, she has to stop sharing so I can. Okay, ah, okay, okay, okay. Kara? Can you yeah, stop okay. sharing? Yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. okay. It's on. Thank you. Okay, you're seeing it all right? Yeah? Yes. Okay. So, good afternoon. First of all, uh, thanks to all the, the, the experts and partners and participants of this, of this event. I think it's been a really interesting and, and useful conference. My name is Ruben. I am an, an European project assistant here at f and Consultores. Uh, I am currently replacing my colleague Nieves, who, as you know, has been in charge of this project since the beginning of it uh, on her behalf, as she is currently on her summer break, probably at the beach. <laughs> so I will present very briefly 
uh, this presentation that she gave to me with the conclusions of, of, uh, of this project on our behalf. Uh, so who, who are we? Um, well, we are a consultancy company focused on internationalization of small and medium enterprises. Um, we currently focus mainly on European programs uh, and we manage several Erasmus Plus projects together with Horizon 2020 and all the different uh, programs. Some examples could be Global Film Art or Pay It Out Loud, Masters, Mayfair, C4, Retail, and a list of, of, of several of the projects. Um, I'm going to try to be brief here. Uh, so what, what have we achieved through this project? Well, thanks to this project, we have provided our trainees with uh, training regarding the given competences of this project. The MOOC is a fantastic job. I had a chance to, to check it during the testing phase and I honestly think uh, the, the partnership did a great job with it and really created a, a really useful and powerful tool for, for the learners. Uh, and we are also really proud of this skill assessment tool and think it will provide great outcomes in the future for the project. Um, as lessons learned throughout the development of this project, um, I'm sure that Nieves will have been glad to share her thoughts about the partnership, but uh, she told me that it's been a really grateful experience um, working with all of you and creating these nice contents in this um, really, really nice environment. Uh, for myself, I would say that um, checking the mock and, and the, the contents created, I honestly think that some of the models would have been helpful even for me because um, as we say here in the presentation, um, there are a lot of things that I wasn't even aware that I didn't know about digital skills. So I think that the contents created are really helpful even for, for other um, um, profiles of, of learner. And to summarize and, and in, in conclusion on our behalf, I would say that uh, the next steps is um, mainly dissemination. For us in organization, it is a crucial part on, on every project that we manage um, to really make sure that the project and the outcomes of the project um, arrive to the widest possible audience. Um, and we are currently actually living really difficult times uh, because of Corona uh, that is actually endangering the employments of, of a lot of people. So I am completely sure that um, this project will find its way and, and be really helpful for, for many people. So that's everything on our behalf. So thank you very much for the conference and, and, and everything. Thank you very much, Ruben. And, and it's a pity that we didn't meet during the project, but yeah. uh, it's very nice to, to meet you finally. And greetings to your colleagues who have been involved in this three-year uh, yeah. achievement. So, uh, Chiara, can, can, we, can we do another microphone check with you? Now, can you hear me? Um, absolutely low voice. I'm not sure if it's good enough for, for your presentation. Yeah. I, I can uh, speak louder, perhaps? Okay, maybe let's, let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Everyone, volume up. Okay. Now you can see my presentation? Yes, yes, we can. And if you speak really loud, we can hear you. Okay. Okay, our organization, as you know, is uh, Atmaya in Crete. Uh, we have a great number of uh, secondary education schools. We have uh, 55 schools, about 1,000 teachers, uh, more than 10,000 students, many vet students, more than 2,000 vet students, and more than 1,000 adult students. We are actively participating in many Erasmus projects because uh, we believe this creates a great opportunity for our teachers to learn and uh, cooperate with other teachers, but also for our students. And we also learned very hard way from the COVID situation and for the economic uh, crisis situation, how our lives is affected from uh, uh, cooperate, from what
what happens to other countries. So I think that it's a very important uh, competence for our students and uh, teachers to learn to cooperate and work with other countries in various projects and policies. So uh, now our experience and the participation from the for the for from the ASCO job project. Uh, we would very much like the, the, the whole methodology of the ASCO job project was a very uh, sound methodology for developing this project. We like uh, the desk readers and uh, desk readers and the development of the materials, but uh, what we enjoyed uh, most is uh, working with people, which, which was uh, at the first stage of the project, which was uh, the face of the local survey that we choose to do face to face, the workshop with the participants that we, we could get uh, feedback and do some participatory designs. This was a great experience for us. And we also liked very much the pilot. The pilot program it was a, a very important experience because we learned from our participants. What we have learned now from this project, I think that the most important uh, results from our research is what we verified from the workshops we did with the stakeholders that uh, they think is very important the motivation to learn and the ability to learn new tools and methodologies. This was the most important competence for them. And also the ability to solve problems autonomously uh, using online resources. This was uh, very high in their priorities for uh, every type of uh, employee that they had. Uh, so I think that uh, we also gained experience because we used the big bomb uh, from uh, developing uh, digital competence in parallel with other types of competences like the cognitive competence. This was very important and involved a lot of things, especially uh, in the problem solving part. Uh, we also realized that uh, a multidisciplinary project team with uh, experts from uh, various uh, fields like uh, computer science, pedagogies, and uh, cognitive science is important in order to build a, co a, a coherent pro program and quality resources. Uh, we have already uh, advertised and used the ASCO job uh, training path uh, to prepare our learners uh, for distance, for further distance learning and teleworking, which is uh, very important, and, and they see a future in this. That is a very important competence for them. Uh, what our learners have su su suggested is that they would like to see the Ask for Job uh, program to develop and include perhaps higher levels uh, of the deep comp uh, included in uh, some in the ASCO job materials and perhaps materials for different target groups. Uh, also the experience of the pandemic, I think has made us realize that there is an urgent need for developing efficient uh, distant, le distant learning methods and training materials focusing on the pedagogies and the ways to make these uh, uh, pro programs more engaging because of the distant learning, uh, this problem, to, to, to how to make this communication more engaging uh, for the learners because they, they, especially this type of learners, they need encouragement and support in order to go on with uh, such a program. And also there is a great need to, uh, to training teachers and adult educators on a mass scale, uh, on effective uh, learning uh, methods and techniques, uh, especially using distant learning tools. So it was a great experience. We had uh, learned a lot. We cooperated. We had a very good uh, communication and cooperation with the partners. And we hope that we'll uh, work again in the future. So thank you.
I hope that you heard some percent of what I said. Yes, yes, yes. Finally, it wasn't that bad, at least for me. So thank you very much. It worked. Okay, thank you. Bye. Please uh, stop sharing your screen while we are moving to Poland, where we had two partners. And first, I would like to invite uh, sorry, uh, yeah, the Institute for Private Enterprise and Democracy Foundation from Warsaw, Poland. Yes, hello, that's me. Hi, Paulina. Hello. Okay. Yes, it works. Great. Okay, so this will be a quick presentation as you asked for it. Uh, hello, I'm Pauline. I'm from Polish Institute, Polish Think Tank uh, from Warsaw. Uh, as Peter said, we were one of two Polish partners and the second partner was AHE. That's why we shared uh, all works uh, according to this project and we were um, um, together, uh, we, we, we've tried to cooperate together. Uh, who we are? We are the Polish Think Tank. Uh, we started our activities at the beginning of '93, so uh, we are old. We are one of the uh, latest and oldest uh, Polish Think Tank. Uh, we are one of the first independent research institutes uh, in Poland. Uh, we are the foundation of Polish Chamber of Commerce, and we uh, mostly deal with employees and employers in Poland, uh, all over the Poland, uh, all over uh, our country, and that's why we focus on their uh, needs. Um, we mostly deal with, uh, with uh, these groups, but we uh, do a lot of uh, research, analysis, and uh, recommendation for economic policy for our uh, government and uh, we try to influence them for uh, reforms and uh, support uh, Polish market and Polish economy. Uh, during these whole years we've realized over 60 projects, all of them were co-financed by external um, uh, sources, mostly by European Union. Uh, what we've achieved in uh, during this uh, three years project, uh, um, the first step, as all uh, partners said before me, was the national survey, and we've asked uh, our employers uh, what do they need from the employees, and what was the greatest um, news for us that uh, they they do need, of course, the employers with uh, employees with digital competences, but they also need uh, the employees with high cognitive abilities and they uh, for sure they want, uh, they are seeking for multitasking employees and that's uh, um, the greatest news for us that they need uh, the employees who can share these two uh, skills. Uh, we were responsible for digital content creation area in our MOOC. Um, we shared this with Bulgarian, pro with, uh, Bulgarian yes, uh, partners, so we are very happy that um, we could create something nice for this area. Uh, and we've prepared some evaluation of these eckers. Uh, we try to do it by ourselves and uh, we try to involve our testimonials. And uh, what we've learned from this is uh, that um, despite of uh, many, many activities, mostly in Poland, we have a lot of activities that um, are dealing with digital skills development and uh, many of them uh, invite unemployed people to, uh, to, 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 um, to these courses, but still we, uh, we think that there are a lot of people with low skills in this area in Poland. Uh, we think that um, the biggest problem for this is that um, these unemployed people with low skills, with low digital skills, they don't know how to start, uh, 
how to um, find this course and how to start this course, what should they do during this course. That's why we find that this um, coaching and consulting, which was in Ask for Job a project, we, 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 um, we, we do this this coaching and consulting activities, they were very, very, very helpful for our testimonials and they need this. They, they need to uh, uh, have some person uh, that will help them to check if they are good in this course, to check if they're understanding this good, right, and uh, that was very helpful for them. Um, What's, um, um, I've said this before that um, in our opinion, the development of technical these digital competences should be um, together with cognitive skills and Polish employees and employers really, really need this for now. And I think that uh, um, this situation, this Corona situation uh, also will, um, uh, uh, will prove this, that we need both of them we need digital and uh, cognitive skills. And of course, we also think that uh, this exchange of international experience uh, helps to share uh, the labor market because now the EU is one big labor market and we think that uh, um, thanks to such projects, we can uh, find out what is the best for this one big market. Uh, what's next? Of course, as a foundation, of, uh, as a, a Polish think tank, we will uh, incorporate this course into our statutory activities, and of course, we will share it during, um, uh, according, um, share it to our partners, and uh, uh, we'll um, try to uh, try to show this and. Uh, um, try to uh, incorporate this in Polish uh, economy, in Polish policy maybe, so I think this will be our activities for next months and years. Thank That's you so much. Thank you very much, Paulina. Uh, let's stay in Poland and go to another city, the city of Łódź, uh, and uh, listen to the presentation from the University of Humanities and Economics. Okay, uh, can you see me? Very well. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Daria. I represent the University of Humanities and uh, Economics in Łódź. And so I'll try to uh, share my screen, but uh, mm, okay. Can you see the presentation? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, so, um, as I said, uh, we represent the University of Humanities and Economics in Łódź, which is in the center uh, of Poland. Uh, it is one of the largest city. Uh, the university is one of the largest non-public universities in Poland. We have more than 20 faculties um, as an offer for our um, students. Uh, our students can choose uh, um, also uh, from uh, um, more than 100 uh, courses, specializations. Uh, we are also in uh, experience in online education. Within our academy, there is Polish uh, virtual university and uh, it offers online studies uh, and co uh, courses. So we have students not only from Łódź, but uh, from Poland, from uh, European countries, but also from countries like uh, Mexico, for example. Uh, we also uh, offer postgraduate studies, professional um, courses for uh, those who have uh, qualifications. Um, we are also involved uh, right now in more than uh, 20 European uh, projects. So, uh, what we have uh, achieved within um, the project, so we were responsible for the first um, output. We uh, provide uh, a tool, the questionnaire uh, for all the partners, um, and they did uh, the research uh, about unemployment and digital competences education. 
uh, and then we um, uh, we delivered um, international report that includes national data but also uh, transnational uh, comparable mm -hmm. analyses. Uh, so, as you could see, uh, low digital uh, skills among uh, unemployed is one of the reasons uh, for um, social exclusion uh, in, uh, in the countries, I think, that not only in uh, partners' uh, countries, so there is a, a really strong need to uh, provide uh, support, professional uh, support that would help to um, uh, uh, to raise uh, the competences uh, that would help them to get to labor uh, markets. Um, and uh, the report is uh, available on our app, uh, website, so um, those who are interested in the report, in the data, which we found really interesting, uh, you, could, uh, you could read all the report with uh, specific and completed uh, data. Uh, what we also did uh, within our uh, university, uh, we did workshop on transversal and cognitive skills among teachers, counselors, professionals. We um, invited um, uh, representatives uh, uh, from uh, institutions like uh, labor office, but also uh, advisors, counselors that work, for example, in um, in uh, non-governmental uh, organizations like uh, funda foundations. Uh, a lot of interest related with the ro uh, workshop um, was from also from schools counselors because it is also very uh, important uh, for for, uh, for them. Uh, next, we uh, established local uh, steering group, the committee um, that uh, gathered uh, not only academic teachers, but also uh, representatives from uh, professional institutions like labor office, counseling and career centers, vocational schools. Uh, we uh, presented the uh, results um, of uh, our projects uh, we also shared with um, with the task that have been implemented uh, so we received a lot of uh, important uh, feedback uh, from them uh, they were also interested in the final uh, product of the project uh, because they could uh, launch the uh, online course uh, in uh, their institutions, for example, for example, in labor um, office. Uh, so they are still in uh, contact uh, with us. So after the project uh, ends uh, and we will have the final product evaluated, of course, we will share uh, with, uh, with them. Uh, what we have uh, achieved also, we are also responsible for providing uh, the materials uh, for the course in the field of uh, safety for basic level. So we are now uh, also we are now in the process of evaluating um, evaluating uh, the course, not only of course from the uh, safety, but uh, uh, from all the micro units. And the lesson, lessons learned, yes, uh, as you could see, uh, even from the first part, uh, the low level of digital skills is still one of the major reasons for uh, digital and social, uh, social exclusions. It, it, uh, not, in, not only in uh, Poland, but in Poland, it's really huge uh, uh, um, problems. So we really, uh, need uh, continuous and complex work in the in this field, uh, and I think that uh, a lot of important support can come from European uh, projects. So I think that the project could uh, continue um, to uh, to uh, provide uh, more support in um, in this field. Train 
not only the unemployed, but also the professionals that give the support to the uh, unemployed. Uh, what next? Well, we will, as a university, we will definitely include the course into our uh, university online platform, Polish Virtual University, because it includes a really very important uh, information uh, for our students. We have uh, uh, the branch uh, consulting and guidance um, at our regular uh, study offer, but also uh, in our offer within postgraduate uh, studies. So we will definitely use, we will of course share the course with other institutions, uh, with our partners from uh, steering uh, group uh, uh, commit, but also from our uh, other uh, academic uh, partners that we uh, uh, cooperate. And we are going to use the material from the, the survey uh, for uh, the articles, um, conferences, uh, because uh, the problem is really uh, uh, crucial. So uh, thank you very much for the, the chance to cooperate in, uh, in this project and in, uh, in the very great professional team. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daria. <clears throat> and uh, last, but not at all least, we have a presentation from our Turkish partner from the city of Turgutlu. And I think, Arif, you are with us, right? Yes, I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, that, yes. Can you share your screen for your presentation? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. You can see now. Yes, and just speak a little bit louder because we can hardly hear you. Uh, okay. Thank uh, you. I just finished my lessons and uh, uh, after that I started uh, from my phone. So just uh, opened from uh, the in PC. Maybe it's uh, hard to uh, change many things from here. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, hi everyone, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I am, uh, this is Ari from uh, Turgutlu, uh, from western part of Turkey, near Izmir. Maybe uh, many of uh, you can hear Izmir, you know, maybe. Uh, I'm going to present you uh, our presentation. Uh, uh, first of all, who we are. Turgutlu Kaymakamlık is the highest public authority in our town. So we are active in lots of areas. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of them is local public education. The cooperation with Directorate of National Education is strong and does uh, the governorship and work directly with schools and to improve the quality of education in these schools and also uh, adult education uh, center with the adult, adult education center. So we are uh, working with cooperatively with adult education center and uh, any other uh, educational uh, centers and uh, schools also. What we uh, achieved during the project process, various activities like script analysis and uh, European awareness scenario workshop enabled to us get closer to our target group and evaluate the needs uh, thanks uh, to our project, uh, as for job, now we, ha uh, we have a, a ready-made parts that can be used in field of employment by uh, our trainers and consultants. This open education source shows both trainers and candidates their levels and how to improve those levels. This source is prepared by uh, our project partners from many countries, uh, for nine countries actually, uh, thus it is a rich and diverse. Any lessons uh, learned? The project activities assisted the governorship while working with the target group, namely long-term un uh, unemployed people 
mushroom transfer is uh, of knowledge skill values and attitude between the, our target group and governorship was very positive during the local activities besides the exchange of knowledge uh, the good practice among the network of uh, partners and collaborators at local national level uh, helped to improve the quality of work the message we wish to give uh, is that you can achieve what you want just you need to write truth this is our message uh, if you want to achieve uh, get your goals uh, just you need your right to the next this is open education source will be uh, used in different formal and informal education contests by applying them effectively of course this uh, achievement will pave the way other innovators and will set a good example of, uh, for people working in the field. Robert Lukanga Fonder will take part in the further projects uh, initiatives to support the target group, of course, every time. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this short presentation. Thank you very much, Arif, and thank you for making yourself available uh, because I know that you are very busy with uh, restarting uh, in the school. Uh, are there any questions about uh, uh, about the project or to the presenters? This is the this is the time to ask. Uh, though we are a little bit late, it's after five. But if there are any questions, we are, would like to hear them. Well, if there are no questions, then I would like to thank you very much uh, for your participation. Um, we hope that you enjoy the event and receive some useful information from the keynote speakers and also from the project uh, partners. Um, I, <clears throat> it's, uh, I have to tell you that uh, shortly uh, we will send you an evaluation form and we will ask you to provide us uh, with your feedback about the information you received, about the presentations you heard. And uh, also importantly, uh, each participant uh, will receive a certificate of attendance uh, from us in email. So and, and everyone who attended the event and uh, registered uh, beforehand, we receive a certification of attendance in the emails, in, in email. Many thanks again uh, to all the presenters and, uh, and all the participants uh, to actively participate during this uh, whole three-hour event. And finally, I really have to tell you that, that it was a very great experience for myself and for my team to take part in the Ask for Job project. Uh, Andrea, maybe you would like to say a final word as a project coordinator. I want to thank to everybody who took part in this conference, in particular to our partners, of course, to All Digital who organized this incredible event, and to all partners who took some time for doing this, uh, this presentation. I think it's, uh, as, as I said before, it, it is one of the most relevant things. Uh, uh, this is the proof that there has been a real effect on the organization, a real impact on all the organizations that have been involved, and I'm sure that this impact will be also more significant when it will be applied to organizations that are outside this partnership and that will import this methodology inside their, uh, their team. And I'm also glad to know that uh, all of you involved uh, stakeholders that took part in the pathway inside this, uh, this conference, uh, I think this also was particularly relevant just to show that we have had, we, we've done a lot of work also to, to get in touch with all the persons that will take benefit from what we are developing. I think that these are the, the things that will uh, remain the most. And I want to say thanks again to all of you and uh, looking forward to keeping uh, in contact and doing something new all together. Thank you again. Thank you, Peter. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks again. And um, 
anytime if you want to discuss policy experimentation or other opportunities, maybe also in the new program. Thanks, Peter, for inviting me. Thank you, Eric, for joining. Yep. You, indeed, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Bye. 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 Now I stop the recording. I do. <laughs>